Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. We're continuing to work on our shmup game, and in this video, we're going to improve our collisions so that they feel a little bit better when you're playing. So in the last video, we added graphics to our game so that we have a nice looking ship and we have a nice looking meteor and so on. But our problem is that, and I'll find a slow one so you can see it, Let's get a slow one to come at me there. I see a slow one on the right hand side. So watch what happens when this slow meteor gets close to my ship. Do you see that? So it collided, or it told me I was dead, even though it didn't really look like those two things touched. So what's going on? So let's look at this diagram. When we do collisions normally, we're using rectangles. The technical term for that is an axis aligned bounding box. So each image has a rectangle that outlines the space that it fills. And it's a collision if those two triangles overlap. So in this picture, the meteor counts as hitting the ship, even though to your eye, if you can't see those rectangles, it looks like the meteor is still pretty far away from the ship. So that tends to make players frustrated. Um, now, one solution you can do is you can make the collisions use a smaller rectangle, right? So you have a, you draw a, you figure out a smaller rectangle that would cover part of the spaceship and you use that, okay? Another option, and it sort of depends on the shape of your, of your object, is you can use a circular bounding box. Now, this example I've drawn over here, the circle works really well for the meteor. Right, it almost exactly outlines it. And depending on what size we pick for the circle, we can make it so that they get pretty close. Right, the very tips of the wings of the spaceship and the nose of the spaceship are sticking out. But in general, everything moves fast enough that you're not gonna see the difference of those few pixels. And in fact, it will make the game seem really more fun if the player sees the meteor go super close to them and thinks, oh, it's going to hit my wing. Oh, somehow I dodged it. I must, be, I must be really, really good, right? It gives them a good feeling as opposed to what happened over there on the left, which is I thought I missed it and it still killed me. Now I'm upset. Now there are trade-offs for which of these kind of systems you use. The access line bounding box is the fastest, meaning the computer can calculate whether two rectangles overlap really, really fast. So if you have lots and lots of them happening, it's never going to slow you down. It can do it really fast. The circular bounding box is not that much slower. It's a little bit slower. What the computer has to figure out is if the radius of the circle of one and the radius of the circle of the other, you know, what those are and, and are they touching? You know, so are the edges of the circles touching? And for, in, for our cases, um, it's going to be fine. We're not going to have thousands and thousands of things on the screen at the time. At a time, we're going to have dozens. So it won't really slow us down very much. Um, one other option that, uh, that we're not going to do, but I'll go ahead and tell you about it, is something called pixel perfect collision. And that means that the computer looks at the pixels of the meteor and the pixels of the ship and checks every pixel to see did any of those pixels touch. Now that absolutely perfectly tells you whether the shape's touched, but it also is very expensive in time for the computer to do. And the amount of accuracy you get or the, the effect you get is not really that much better than the circular, than the circular bounding box um, while making the computer a lot slower um, or the game a lot slower. So rather than do that, there's most cases programmers will choose one of these because it's very rare that you need to do pixel perfect collision. Um, so we're not going to do that in ours either. So Pygame makes it pretty easy to do the different kinds of collisions. And so we want to do the circular style of collision. So that means that we want to set one more thing on our player sprite and our meteor sprite. And that is you need to give it a radius. So as long as the sprite has a property called radius, then it will know how big of a circle to look at. 
But then the question is, well, how big a radius should we do? I know my, my spaceship is 50 pixels wide and only 38 pixels tall. So how do I decide how big to make it? Well, there's a little bit of experimentation you can do, but let's say we decided to make it half. So the radius is 25, so that means the circle will be 50 pixels across. Well, you can do this. This little command is pygame.draw.circle is going to draw a circle. So we're going to draw a circle on top of our spaceship just so that we can see how big our radius is. Okay, So we're going to draw it on top of the image in red and we're going to put the center of the circle at the center of the sprite and we're going to draw the circle's radius is going to be the radius. Okay, And now we can see what that looks like and we can adjust this value until we have it the way we like it. Okay, so let's do that on the meteor as well while we're at it, and then we'll make sure that we have everything right. Okay, so let's set the radius on the meteor. And another way you can do this is if you're using a different size meteor, for example, you might be using a different size one than me. So instead, we could make the radius be calculated by the size. So if we say what's the rect what's the width of the rectangle? Okay? And then we just divide that by 2. And then it will be the size of the rectangle. I mean the size of the of the image. Um, and then let's do the same thing again where we're going to take this uh, circle drawing command. I'm going to copy that and paste it here so that both of my shapes will have big ugly red circles drawn on top of them so I can see the radius of their circles. So let's see what that looks like when we run it. Okay, so now you can see on the meteors, there's not really any meteor corners sticking outside of those much, a little bit on the right hand side. But on the player, you can see how, it, see how it's chopped off at the top and the bottom because the circle is bigger than the size of the ship. And if we want it to look more like that diagram we made, we probably want to make the radius a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go back to the ship here, and I'm going to try making the radius about 21. And then, actually, let's try 20 and see what that looks like, and maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So with the radius of 20, now you can see the edges of the wings sticking out there, and that's fine. Again, you're not going to notice that much um, when we do the collisions that those stick out and it's going to give it that fun close action feel. So that's probably a pretty good size. The meteors I think need to be a little smaller too because we want a little bit of wiggle room on those too. So instead of being the width, I'm going to multiply the width times about 0.9. So we're going to just make it 90% of the width. Uh, which makes it a little bit smaller. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, see how you can see a little bit of the corners of the meteors sticking out? That's totally fine. Might even be okay with 85%. Let's try it and see. So 85% would be 0.85. Yeah, that's going to be fine. There's a little extra sticking out on the side because it's an irregular shape. But again, you might be using a different meteor, and it's a slightly different shape too. So altogether, this is going to be fine, and we'll work with the changes we make down the road. So now that we have the radius set, we're able to do the circular collision, which means we just have to go down here to our sprite collide command, where we're checking to see if the player hit the mob. And by default, that's using the rectangles. So instead, we just need to add in here as the last option, pygame.sprite.collide underscore circle. So instead of, so this is specifying what type of collision we want to use. And if you leave it blank, it uses rectangle. So if you add in collide circle here, it will use circle. If you were to be doing something like the perfect pixel collision I was talking about, this is where you would put that as well, although there's a lot of extra stuff you have to do to make that work. 
So now we should be colliding only if the circles touch. Now, if you're very careful, you could probably get, yeah, see how that passed right through my wing? But if I run straight into it, the circles touched, we are good. Now let's get rid of those ugly red circles. I'm just going to comment these lines out. They're useful to sort of keep there in case you ever want to adjust things, change the way you're doing the circle. You can uncomment that and see the circle again and make everything just the way you want it. So now we are good and we have coll circle collisions. See how the it looked like the meteor actually hit my ship when I did that? That's going to look great when we start to have explosions. Now we don't need to do anything really with the bullet. The bullet, since it's long and, and narrow, um, is working fine with a rectangle around it. Uh, a circle would actually make the bullet collisions work less effectively. So that would be not as good. So we're not going to change the way the bullets and the um, mobs collide. Uh, and in fact, since the bullets move faster too, it's even less likely that you'll notice anything unusual about the rectangles. So we're just fine there.